I thought I'd have a look at this kit that I recently bought. This is a FM radio um, based on a little surface mount chip um, called the Hex 3653, um, which seems to be a chip that's difficult to find information on. It's, there's no definitive data sheet, but there, there are a couple of websites where people have used this uh, chip and even built this particular kit. So, um, so I'm going to have a go at that, see if I can make make this work and um, try and explain how this is put together. So the first thing is to try and get the surface mount chip in place. Now um, surface mount soldering is not really one of my favourite things. But we just have to do the best we can. So there's the chip and uh, see I'm aligning the dot here with the little cutout on the silk screen because that will be pin one there so we need to make sure that's properly aligned. And um, so what I might do first, I'll put a bit of um, flux on there. So get the flux pen in. Put some flux on these contacts. and get the chip properly aligned. So first of all what I want to do is try and tack one corner. So try and get a bit of solder on that corner pin. Oh, it's gone a bit wonky already. Okay, that's more or less aligned now. So I've just got that top corner there soldered in. That just gives me a bit of, you know, sort of physical um, uh, attachment. So it's possible for me to go down now and and solder all the other pins correctly in place. These things can be quite tricky. So now I'll try and get the opposite diagonal corner in place, and then it should be good and sturdy. Okay, just had to change the light a bit because the because uh, it's snowing outside, uh, so there was suddenly less light in here. Okay, so I've now got it tacked on the two corners. Uh, I should just put a bit more a bit more flux on here. And then I can get the other solder joints done.
install the bridge on there. Okay, so that doesn't look too bad. I'll just check with the uh, the magnifying glass, make sure that there aren't any bridged connections or stray bits of solder. That looks pretty good. Right, as, as I say, I don't really like the uh, surface mount stuff because it's very fiddly and um, it's very difficult to work the soldering iron on such a tiny piece. Um, but there we go. Right, so now we'll start to put the other components in the board. Um, let's just have a look at what we've got here. So it comes with a battery box, so you get the uh, the three volt, the uh, two AA cells. Not sure whether I'm going to run it off battery, but there we go. Um, we have a stereo output jack. Uh, that's an inductor probably for the um, for the radio part of the circuit uh, we've got four resistors all the same value I think that's 10k we have a couple of diodes from what I remember that was also on the radio input side couple of electrolytic capacitors same value uh, some switches four five switches for the various radio control functions there's a pin header there uh, yellow lead a crystal to provide the clock for the chip and this looks like a transistor uh, yeah s8050 that's a npn transistor and then we have a jumper for the header and we have some ceramic capacitors so two i think that's 100 nanofarad And a 22. Right, so I think I'll start with the resistors. So, as I said, they're all the same value, so there's no possibility of getting them in the wrong place. Like a lot of these Chinese kits, uh, this one has no instructions with it and it has no schematic that you can follow. Um, but often you don't need it because from the silk screen you can often figure out exactly where to, to place the components. Um, and also, as I said, in this case we're quite lucky because some people have already built this kit and published details online so I'll leave a link in the description below um, to one of the sites which is quite nice because the guy has actually worked out the circuit diagram which is especially useful in this case because there's no um, there's no readily available data sheet for the chip because sometimes one of the tricks is that you can if you look at the data sheet, they have a, 
a reference circuit and um, so you can see what components are really needed to um, make the chip work and then uh, a lot of these Chinese vendors they base the kits really exactly on the circuits that you find in the datasheet so if you have the datasheet you actually have the schematic okay let's clip those ends off Okay, so we've got four resistors in place. I'll we'll put the diodes in as well because they're nice flat components. So the diodes, uh, you can see at the bottom here, you can see on the silk screen that the two, two diodes go in opposite directions. So we'll do that. We have an inductor, I'll put the inductor in. I've taken a sneak peek at the uh, circuit diagram and um, so you can see from the circuit diagram that this section here the diodes and this capacitor here and the uh, inductor this is all um, part of the antenna input into the FM chip so this is the, the radio side here And what next? We'll put that capacitor in, I think, on the radio side. So this is the 22, 22PF, I think it is. And the other capacitors are the 100N, so I'm going to put those in. So 
I guess these are probably for decoupling being so close to the chip itself. And while I'm here, I'll put the transistor in as well. You can see actually from the silk screen, it shows you which way in the transistor goes. So it can't go wrong, really. So in this case, the uh, transistor, the NPN transistor, is uh, purely being used as a switch. Um, oh, it's a bit wonky there, isn't it? I'll put it in a bit wonky, but it'd be all right. Um, so it's switching the LED on and off. I presume the LED is some kind of uh, tuning indicator that tells you when you've hit a strong FM station. Okay, not many components to go now, so uh, we'll put the electrolytic capacitors in. Again, these two are the same value, so you can't really go wrong. But with electrolytics, you do need to get the polarity right. So the white stripe shows you the negative side. So make sure I get that away from the plus. Okay, there's the caps, and also we've got the crystal, which I think goes in Y1 here. I want to leave room for it to lie down on the board, if that's possible. Yeah, there's a bit of space there, I think next to the transistor Right, so we need to get this header in also. Pin header. I'm not exactly sure what this is for. But there's, there's a jumper here. Um, so I think the jumper and the pin header are part of the same thing.
and then what remains is the five switches and the lead. The lead goes up here. I might put that switch in first so that we don't get don't get a problem with seating the lead in place. Um, right, I just have to buzz out these switches because I'm not terribly sure which way these work. this switch out okay so we've got continuity across the switch across this way so I think it's only one set of contacts and let's just try this way Yeah, so it's a single pole switch switching across this way. All right, so squeeze this little fella in here. Quite nice actually because they hold themselves in when you've got the got the thing pushed in through the circuit board. There we go, five switches in place. Okay, those look to be in place. So, see there, I just tacked one, one corner, just to try and get the right position for the switch. Now I know they're all aligned. I can actually go back and properly solder all the legs. Right, and then we'll get the lead in on the end here. So the long leg is positive, so we'll put that in there. I'll just put the I'll put the phono, I mean the headphone socket in at the same time. I think. Okay. 
So it's got stereo connections. I presume it's actually a FM stereo device. Did look like there were two outputs on the circuit diagram. These cutters might need replacing. I think I've ruined them clipping big wires actually. Okay, so there we are. That is completed. All the components are gone. Put the power. I'll, I'll power it from three volts for the sake of testing. Okay, so we've got the battery box in place. Now we could give it a test, can't we? Uh, oh yes, the only thing that's missing is this jumper. I wasn't sure what this, what the purpose of the jumper. Sure, what the header is for. I'm just going to put the um, jumper on these two connectors on the end. Um, these, the two on the other end here, are the only ones actually with a connection. So I'll try it without, see what happens. Uh, one more thing we need to put an antenna on it. So we find a piece of wire for the antenna. Quite a small piece of wire here, but we'll try this, see how we go. antenna on there later. Actually somewhere in a in a drawer I've got one of those uh, extendable you know telescopic antennas that came out of an old radio so I might go and look for that. Okay plug in the audio Got a Bluetooth speaker here. OK, 
Okay, got a light. That's a good sign. Let's try volume up. Seek. Oh, there we go. Ah, oh, so that seems to be power on and off. Okay, so we can hear something. Let's try and tune in a bit better. There we go. So we got we tuned into a radio station that's picking up. It's quite nice. Let's just move this jumper. See what this does. You said ah. Okay. Always great, right? but it's not just about the food. It's about being up there and having this privilege of taking photos. And did you get a picture of them there? All right. So the jumper is actually really needed, isn't it? Yeah, we gave him a high five. He said, what's this like? And he said, it was just amazing. I love that. We got a couple of selfies. That was Anthony Martin in Chichester yesterday. Close your eyes. OK, so that's good. A nice little kit. Uh, quite easy to make. And works well. That's good and loud. Um, OK, well, thanks very much for watching. Uh, if you liked it, give me a thumbs up. And um, see you in the next video.